Hey guys, my name is Jared Schoemaker. This is the Magnetic Men's Club. Thank you so much for tuning in, seeing what we're all about here. Today, I'm gonna go over an email that I got from a 35-year-old guy who is sort of stuck in life. He is married, he has kids, has a house, a dog, all of that stuff. By all intents and purposes, he's doing very well in life, yet he's feeling something's missing. He's just not happy and he doesn't really understand why. He doesn't understand with all of the abundance he has. He, sh he feels like he should be satisfied with what he has. And this is a common thing. I've experienced this myself. I'm sure many of you listening to this has. Why is it sometimes we, ha we feel unhappy? Sometimes we have this anxiety. Sometimes we just feel stuck in life. Quite frankly, why does our life suck sometimes? Let's face it, life is no walk in the park. Life isn't blowjobs and rainbows. It's, it's hard. You got to get up every day, especially if you're a man, and perform and execute for yourself, for your family. Of course, if you have an employer, he's expecting you to execute. And it feels like we go through this rat race where we get up, and we do the same thing. It's like Groundhog's Day. And most of us kind of live for the weekend, but only on the weekend, this is where we get the honeydew list and we get all of the chores around the house we gotta do. And there's baseball games for the little Timmy and Sally has band recital. I don't know what the hell Sally does, but we're just in this hamster wheel where we're basically going through the motions of life. And believe me, I've experienced this, and if you've experienced this as well, listen to the entire video because I wanna give you some perspectives on why this is. When I started implementing this, I started feeling more joy in my life, and I started understanding what was really going on, and it's all inside of our head. So the first question is, is how much of your life is actually yours? Are you living it the way you want? Are you living it the way others want you to. You know, society has this blueprint for us. And for most of us, especially in the US, it sort of goes something like this. Get good grades, go to college, go to a trade school, whatever, whatever it is, go to work, whatever. Find somebody, settle down with them, marry them, get a house, have kids, save for retirement, go on, okay vacations and basically that's life and if you and if you have followed that blueprint you know that as you get older you start questioning things you're questioning is this it is this all life is supposed to be this hamster wheel this this shit well no wonder why our lives suck we kind of been sold a lie because the thing is we're never really taught how to think for ourselves we're told what to do do these things, then you'll be happy. So we're always chasing this happiness, this idea of happiness externally from ourselves. When you were younger, maybe in high school, maybe younger than that, maybe college, what did you want to be when you got older? And then ask yourself, are you that now? If you are that now, then congratulations, because most people are not doing the vocation or the thing they wanted to do. They kind of have done what society, their parents, has told them to do. Most of us basically get caught up in meeting everybody else's expectations that we kind of forget what we expect from ourselves. Become nothing but actors in someone else's play, reading lines, we didn't even fucking write. And so the number one reason why you're feeling stuck, the number one reason why you might have some sadness, some resentment, some anxiety, some what the fuck, is because you have up until this point have done everything others wanted you to do because you were programmed by society. And what's happening is you're ideal self or even the, 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 the sense of self who you think you are or who you think you should have been isn't mapping onto your real self. And in the middle of that is self-awareness. And the further you go, you go 
into your self-awareness. The further you understand it, your self-esteem starts feeling low when you're not aligned. When you're not aligned with the values that you want to do, the things that you want to do, but you have to do them for other people now, there's a misalignment, there's something off, and this is why you feel off. This is why you feel stuck. This is why you feel unhappy. This is why you might have some anxiety about what, what am I doing with my life? Is this it? We basically push down parts of us in order to conform with what society wants us to do. And it, it's not such a bad thing. It's, it's sometimes you want to make your parents happy. Sometimes you end up doing these things because you're really good at it. Maybe you don't want to be a scientist. Maybe you're a scientist right now. I don't fucking know. But you're really good at math and science and everyone's told you, the teachers told you, your friends, man, you're smart. And so it feels really good. And so you think that's what you should do. But maybe you wanted to be an English teacher. I don't know. But the point is what you're doing now versus what you ideally have wanted to do, if that's not aligning up, this is why you feel stuck. This is why you have a sense of unhappiness about you. This is why you're probably watching this video. The thing to remember on suffering is all suffering comes from either dwelling in the past or focusing on the future. Now stay with me, think about it. Maybe you were really good in high school, you were the captain of the football team, you were the most popular, you were the jock, all the women loved you, and then for whatever reason, you didn't go to college, you didn't continue to play that sport, and life has happened, you have some kids, you're in an okay job, but you're living in the past. You're always reliving, man, high school was awesome. I was banging all these girls. Everybody respected me. Now I'm just a nobody. I'm sort of just part of society's cog in the wheel. You start dwelling on the past, you start reliving the past, and you get sadness. Likewise, if you start thinking about the future, of all the things in the future that haven't even happened yet, this is where anxiety comes from. I don't, I don't know, I have enough money for retirement. What if the stock market crash? What if I lose my job? And all of these things, and our brains are so good at creating virtual realities that don't even exist. So what do you do about this? How do we reconcile this? How do we at least make some steps to rec reconcile this? Well, the very first thing I need you to understand or I want you to try is just living in the present moment. And of course you're saying, oh, Jared, oh, that's easy. I just pretend that everything's happy and you know, I just live for now. Yes, take stock of what is working in your life. Maybe you're in good health. Maybe you have a beautiful wife and kids and you're able to pay your bills and you have a decent car and you have a job you get to go to. Think of how many people don't have that. Think of how many people would kill to have your life. It'll ground you back to perspective. It'll ground you back to living in the moment now. You can't really have, you can't really be unhappy if you're living for the present moment and practicing gratitude and practicing just the fact that you're alive and being grateful for that because you don't know what tomorrow can bring. And once you do that, once you have taken stock of what is working in your life and you're practicing gratitude and you start to have a sense of, okay, maybe, I, maybe I'm not as unhappy as I think I am, and that's the key, your thoughts. You just said it, I just said it for you. We're all so stuck in our heads. We're all so stuck in just these thoughts that keep generating over and over and end. A lot of people think these thoughts are real, but the point is, these thoughts are just thoughts. They just happen. And by grounding yourself to today, by grounding yourself to the present moment, you can start limiting these thoughts and just focusing on what you need to do today, what today brings you, 
the adventures for today, of course, maybe some of the, the difficulties today, but you just focus on today and you don't worry about the past because that's gone and you don't worry about the future because you don't even know if you're going to be in it. And then ask yourself, what do I really want? I know you have responsibilities. I know you probably have a wife or a girlfriend, you have kids. I know you have responsibilities and I'm not telling you to abduct those, but I'm asking you, what do you want? And then ask yourself, what makes you happy? What are your passions? What, what, what gets you fired up to get out of bed? And if you're not doing those things, why? I had a friend of mine who was so good at playing the guitar in high school and college, he even like, that's how he made his money. It's how he paid for his tuition. We just go to these, you know, these random bars and stuff and he got really well known. And he started making money to, to pay for his school, but then he started getting into his head that maybe I can make a career out of this. But then he soon realized that that's not his passion. He enjoys playing the guitar. He enjoys playing it for others, but to actually make money and, and make this a full-time career, he realized, no, that's not what I want to, that's not what I want to do. This is just something I'm good at, but it's not what I want to do. He actually wanted to be an attorney and, and he is. But he stopped playing the guitar for years because he got married and he had kids and you know, just life happens. And he calls me, he's like, I just, you know, Jared, like I, I used to go out and I used to party all night and just strum the guitar and sing. He had a really good voice as well. And people knew me. Now I'm just, I'm just an attorney working in a firm, trying to make partner. I come home and I go to bed and that's it. And I was like, hey man, well, let me ask you a question. You didn't forget to play the guitar. You still know how to. Yeah, you might still hurt your fingers now. You got to get those calluses back and all this. Why don't you start playing again. That seemed to be where your joy is. You don't have to play for money. You make plenty of money, but play for yourself. I said, do you know how many charities are around that would love to have you and they don't have to pay you because you know they're trying to, they're trying to make money for an event or a cause? He's like, no, I, didn't, I never realized that. I said, by giving of yourself, of your talents, this is one of the surefire ways to have this thought of unhappiness because you can't be giving of yourself and be unhappy at the same time. It doesn't work that way. So he started doing that. He, his fingers, he was texting me. He's like, man, my fucking fingers hurt. I, I forgot how much this hurts. I got to get the calluses up. I got to get this. And all of a sudden, shit just started happening. He got his voice back and... He started playing for free at a couple different events and, and people were like, wow, you're really good at this. And they were offering to pay him. He goes, no, I don't want to be paid. I just want to do this for me. This is my passion. This is something I have. So let me ask you, what is your passion? Are you good at playing a musical instrument? Are you good at singing? Are you good at painting? Maybe you're really good at math and there's so many kids who are not that good at math that you can tutor them for free. There's always talents that you have that other people need that you can give them freely of yourself, knowing they can't do anything for you. That's where joy comes from. That's where that sense of purpose comes from. By finding your passions, by finding that thing that fires you up, now you're in alignment. That ideal self and your real self are starting to get aligned. You don't have to burn Rome down in order to start getting alignment, start living your core values, your beliefs. Start small. So I ask you, what was it when you were younger that you were really good at, you had an interest in that you're no longer doing? And if you started doing that thing, will it fulfill you? My best guess is probably yes. That's all I got in this video. I wanted just to give you some perspective on your thoughts definitely dictate your emotion. And the only thing you can do in any given situation, because the situation itself really doesn't matter, it's how you perceive that situation. What meaning do you make that situation? So if, it, if you are feeling stuck, unhappy, not really sure what to do, start writing on all the thoughts associated with that. And then I invite you to try to change your thoughts, try to change your perspective, which will change your emotional state. That's how you change your emotional state. My name is Jared Schoomaker. This is the Magnetic Men's Club. If you found this video helpful and you think it might help a friend or a family member, 
please consider sharing this video. Consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that bell icon so you know new videos are being dropped. And also consider joining our men's group. The link is down below. There's so much information in there. Just check out the link. I'm not going to get into all of the hours of content I put in there for you, all the videos, all the webinars, all of the technologies in there. Take a look at it. It's a, it's a kick the tires, two weeks, very low introductory weight. None of this is free. All of the stuff that I do costs money. So if you're not willing or not interested in joining our brotherhood, consider buying us a cup of coffee. Hit the donate now to let us know that you appreciate what we do. With that, my name is Jared. This is the Magnetic Lens Club, and we'll talk soon. Thanks.